Hi, I'm James Messer from ProfessorMesser.com. I'm making this video in July of 2020, where CompTIA has just announced that in November of 2020, they will be releasing the SY0601 Security Plus exam. And in this video, I'm going to explain to you why it probably would not be a good idea to hold off your plans on getting Security Plus until the November timeframe. You probably shouldn't wait to take the Security Plus exam. I think you can summarize the rest of this entire video in this single slide, which is do not wait to get certified. You never want to wait to have that certification in your pocket. Certifications provide you with a wealth of advantages, especially if you're currently looking for a job or for a better job. And having that certification in your pocket or on your resume is much more important than waiting until a new version of a set of exam questions happens to come out. Never, of course, is a very strong word. And I want to explain to you in the rest of this video what I mean when I say never wait to get certified. CompTIA certification exams have version numbers. The certification exam that we have now here in July of 2020 is the SY0501. This was an exam that was released on October the 4th of 2017. And CompTIA has announced that they will be retiring this exam in July of 2021. So as I make this video, you have a year to be able to take the SY0501 exam. When you pass that exam, your certification will be good for three years, regardless of when you pass that exam. CompTIA has also announced that there will be a new version of this exam, the SY0601, that will be available in November of 2020. Those exam objectives are available now, but you obviously can't take the exam until November. I recommend that you get a copy of the exam objectives for the exam that you plan on taking. They're absolutely free. They are on the CompTIA website. And I have a link to the CompTIA website from my website. You can visit professormesser.com slash objectives to find that link to the CompTIA exam objectives. One of the things that's very unique to CompTIA is they provide a lot of detail in these exam objectives. This is not a summary of what will be on the exam. This is a very detailed list of everything you need to know before you go into the exam room. This is something you won't find from Microsoft. Cisco doesn't do this level of detail on their exam objectives. It's very unique to CompTIA. On the SY0501 exam, if you were to count up all of those individual objectives, and I have, there are just over 750 different topics that you need to know before you walk into the exam room. Now, you may not be tested on all of those exam objectives, but you certainly need to know them because they could ask you a question from any of those exam objectives. Security Plus is a pretty big exam. If you compare this to other CompTIA exams like Network Plus, Network Plus has about 500 objectives on it. And each of the A Plus exams, the 221001 and the 221002, have about 570 objectives on each of those exams. With this new release of the SY0601 exam, that number of objectives has increased from 778 to 1,037. So you can see that the SY0601 will be a bit bigger of an exam than the SY0501. They're still asking you the same number of questions on the exam. You still have exactly the same amount of time to take the exam. From a test taker's perspective, they're very similar. The difference is what you need to know before you walk into the room. On the SY0501, you need to know about 778 objectives. And on the SY0601, you need to know 1,037 objectives. So stay with me as I drill down into the numbers so that you can get a better perspective of what the differences are between these two exams. A lot of the topics from the 501 exam will be moved into the 601. In fact, 540 topics, which is about 70% of the 501 exam. So a large grouping of topics from 501 suddenly will now appear on the 601 exam. This is completely normal. CompTIA generally doesn't start over when they create a new exam. They simply update the exam that currently exists. But because the 601 is a much larger exam, there are many more topics on the exam. These 70% of topics from the 501 only make up about 50% of the 601 exam, which means you have to learn another 50% of that exam. Just over 500 topics are brand new on the 601. And what you'll find if you look through previous versions of the exam is that this is relatively normal. You'll notice that the 501 had 65% 
of its topics were brand new in that exam. In this case, it's a smaller number. Only 50% of the 601 is new. And it's that difference in numbers that really is the first reason I would tell you not to wait for the 601 exam. It's going to be a much larger exam, a 33% larger than the 501. A lot of the topics on the 601 will be brand new, and you'll have to learn a lot more information before walking into the exam. So what has really changed between the SY0501 and the SY0601? What you'll find is the 501 exam and the 601 exam are pretty similar when it comes to the type of topics. The 501 tends to be a little more technical. There are questions on that exam, for example, that ask you to compare and contrast different individual protocols or encryption mechanisms or hashing types. And you have to know what all of those differences are between things like AES and RSA and SHA-2. The 601 takes a broader approach to the exam. It's more of a day in the life of a security professional. It focuses on what you would be doing as someone working in IT security. There's a little more focus on command line utilities rather than understanding nuances of different cryptography types or hashing algorithms. You have to know more about reading vulnerability reports and being able to take action on those reports. And then, of course, there's planning and process management and policies that you have to deal with. All of that is a normal part of someone who works in IT security. And this is about what you would expect, of course, for an exam where 50% of the exam is from the old material and 50% of the exam is from the new material. There are certainly new topics on the 601, but a lot of the newer things that have been added have simply been mixed into the same broad general areas that already existed on the 501. So if the SY0601 exam is much bigger, that certainly means that it's much better. And it's certainly much newer, so many people think that that would be the right exam to take. What you'll find, though, is employers aren't concerned about what version of the exam you take. They just want to see if you pass the exam and that you're Security Plus certified. This is something that you'll commonly see for people that have taken previous versions of this exam. And they'll simply renew this certification over time. So you end up taking the exam one time and simply maintaining that certification over the years. For example, there will be a lot of people who took the SY0401 exam six years ago. They have now just renewed through the years. And as long as their certification is renewed and up to date, they have exactly the same certification as somebody who walks in on the first day of the SY0601 and passes that exam. To the employers, they are both Security Plus certified and are even as far as their credentials relating to the Security Plus. So what happens if you wait until July of 2021, just before the SY0501 is due to be retired? Is your certification only going to be good for less than a month? Well, the answer is, of course, not. Once you earn a certification, the clock starts ticking, and you have earned that certification for a three-year period. You could wait until the very last day that the SY0501 exam is offered. You pass that exam, and you will be Security Plus certified for three years. There will still be people that will look at the differences between these two exams, and they'll decide, no, I'm going to take the newer version of the exam. I'm going to take the SY0601, even with all of the things that you've already said. And that may be a perfectly reasonable thing, depending on what your purposes are for taking the SY0601. It is a bigger exam. Some people feel that it will provide them with a better learning opportunity. These are not just certification exams for many people. It's a chance to really understand what's happening in the industry. This is a newer exam. It has more topics on it. And they feel that they're going to get a better educational experience by going through the SY0601 exam process. One of the challenges you may find, though, especially in November of 2020 when this exam is released, is there will be a limited number of study materials available on the market. It takes a number of months for content creators like myself to write books, to make videos, to create additional content and study materials. So there will not be the same amount of study materials available on day one for the SY0601 that you already have available for the SY0501. The decision on which exam you take is ultimately up to you. Find the one that works best for what you're trying to accomplish for yourself and your career goals and go with that particular exam version. So would there be any point 
where you would want to consider taking the SY0601 over the older 501 version of the exam. One of the biggest reasons for taking the 601 series of the exam might just be related to timing. You don't want to study for the 501 exam and then suddenly run out of time and the exam is retired in July of 2021. Instead, you want to see if you've got enough of a ramp to be able to study everything you need to be able to meet that date. And if you think that you're even going to be close to July of 2021, it's probably going to be a better idea to study for the 601 series of the exam. Whether you decide to take the 501 or the 601, we will always have training videos, course notes, practice exams, and other study materials on our website at professormesser.com. Thanks for watching, and best of luck with your studies.